Hey guys, welcome to another episode on dynamic programming. Today we are doing DPV 6.5 and I had done a video earlier, but I'm trying to redo this video to make it even more clearer as to how the algorithm proceeds. Just as a reminder, the problem is pebbles on checkerboard and just recapping the problem, <clears throat> we are given a checkerboard which has four rows and n columns and has an integer written on each square. We are also given a set of two end pebbles which we want to place on some or all of the checkerboards. Uh, each pebble can be placed on exactly one square so as to maximize the sum of the integers in the squares that are covered by pebbles. There's one constraint for placement to be legal. No two of them can be horizontal or vertical, whereas diagonal adjacency is fine. So with that, um, First of all, we are asked what are the legal patterns possible and then solve the problem in order n using dynamic programming. So first off, let's look at the legal patterns. So legal patterns, um, because we cannot have two uh, adjacent horizontal um, checker, um, I guess, um, pebbles. So one of the patterns is you put nothing in a vertical uh, column. The second pattern is that you put just one in the whole column, and the one can be put in many ways. You can see these. These are all legal because you are never crossing um, inside this column. Now, there are other issues when you place multiple columns together. We'll look at them later as to what the pattern compatibility matrix is. But for a single column, you can put these, and these are fine. And then when you put two, two can be put like this or like this or like this. You can, you can see that they will not violate the column um, uh, adjacency principle here and you're always having a gap here so that's within the column you can come up with eight patterns we call them pattern zero through pattern seven um, the other thing because we are given two n pebbles this problem is kind of a bit simple because you will not run out of pebbles right because if you ran out of pebbles then the problem gets even more complicated um, so in this case it's a simpler problem let's stay with that and we will not run out of pebbles because at the most you can only have two in a column, right? You can never have three in a column, otherwise they would become adjacent. So if any column can have at the most two and there are n columns, you will at the most use all the pebbles, right? And um, most likely you will not exhaust all the pebbles. So you have enough pebbles and therefore the problem is not running out of pebbles. We can use that simplification. We observe that right here. The second thing to observe is that not only is this a vertical adjacency principle violation, but there's also horizontal. So when you take one column and the next column, let's just take an example at it. Let's say these were the columns. So when you put some pattern here, let's say you choose this one, I put a pebble here. You know that you cannot put a pebble here, right? You can put a pebble anywhere, here, here, or here, but you cannot put one here. Likewise, if you choose a two pattern in the first one, you put here and here, then you cannot put another pebble here or here. So there are certain patterns that are compatible with each other and certain that are not. So we make a table of that as well. We call it the compatibility matrix. And you can see if pattern zero is compatible with which pattern. So you can see pattern zero is compatible with any pattern, right? So um, because it never collides, you never have the, you know, uh, conflict horizontally or vertically because it's an empty pattern, right? It, it's compatible with any other pattern. So you see that pattern one is compatible, pattern zero is compatible with all patterns, and likewise this way. And when you look at pattern one, pattern one is compatible with pattern zero, it's compatible with pattern two, right? Pattern one is compatible with pattern two because these are diagonal, so that's okay, but horizontal and vertical are not allowed. So this is okay. Likewise, so you fill up this whole matrix and you can review this matrix. So once we have the compatibility matrix done, then let's start to look at how we can crack the problem. So let's just take this example. I've filled up some numbers here just to give you an example of how this would actually look like in a realistic uh, example or situation. You have these uh, four rows and N columns. I've just put N here, but you know N could be any number. I, this really looks like seven columns here, but I just said this is Nth column. And whatever you find here, this is your result, right? So that's that's what we'll look at. But but just look at it. There's some random numbers in all these places, and you're putting some pebbles on each column and moving on and on, uh, making sure that you never violate the adjacency principle, right? So that's that's okay. So let's look at how to solve this problem. Now, in this case, we are trying to solve for column one, and for solving column one, we have those eight options, right? So we don't know which 
one is the best option. We have pattern zero through pattern seven that could be placed on this, which means that I could place one pebble here, no pebbles, one pebble here, 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 or here. I can place two pebbles in the right in in the valid legal configuration like this and this, this and this, or this and this. And so I don't know which one. So I start filling up this table, and the pattern zero uh, and C1. Let's fill that one. So if in this column I put pattern zero, what would be the sum? I place no pebbles, so the sum is zero. Pattern one. If I place pattern one which means I'll, I'll just put a pebble here, which means I'll get one. If I put pattern two, then pattern two is 25 and so on, right? And and so, and if there are multiple pebbles, you see that like here, uh, pattern four would be, um, well, I guess pattern four is this one, but pattern five, pattern five is this and this, so it's 129, right? Pattern six is um, this and this, so that's 34. And pattern seven is this and this, so that's 10. So you can see that, First column is fairly simple because it has no dependency on the previous. It's just whatever you place here, there's nothing before it. So you cannot have the, the, the maximum is really what, whatever fills here. Let's look at the next column, which is where things get more interesting. Now, if we try to solve column two and we assume that column two has pattern zero, what does that mean to you? We know from our compatibility matrix, right? We just go back to our compatibility matrix if we put pattern zero, pattern zero is compatible with any previous pattern. So in the previous column, any of these patterns could exist, right? So if you come here, any of these patterns are valid, which means that, you know, I could have come from here to here. So let's just think about it. If you put pattern zero, pattern zero means that there is no pebbles placed here. So you would not carry any sum in C2. So only you'll be taking up whatever uh, sums could come from the previous, right? So what could be the sums from previous? It could be any of these because all these are valid patterns to come into uh, C2 with pattern zero, right? So so what is the max of all these? Max of all these is 128. So we put 128 there. Then we start solving for pattern one. What if pattern one is in column two, right? So if pattern one is in column two, you have a compatibility because uh, pattern one is not compatible with all other patterns. So I, I've written pattern was, one is compatible with pattern zero in the previous, pattern two, pattern three, pattern four, and pattern six. So, and also when you put pattern one in column two, it also has its own intrinsic value. Intrinsic value of that is 75 because there's a pebble here. So it's not only this, plus it carries the best of the previous and let's look at what are compatible patterns. If these are the compatible patterns, what is the max of them? 128 again. So 128 plus 75 becomes 203. Now you start to see the pattern in the, in the problem, in the dynamic programming, that we can see how the dependencies are playing in into any given row and column. So um, with that, let's uh, try to set up our algorithm. So the way we can set up our algorithm is, let's say the original checkerboard is called MIJ. And this MIJ gives you the values of the checkerboard. What is the MIJ? Um, let's look at it. This is the MIJ. So given any I and any J, which is the column, I is the row and J is the column, it can give you what is the value in this square, right? So that MIJ is known to you, okay? So, and then there's a compatibility matrix that we have figured out already, we have populated that, but this compat is actually a function. And it says, you know, given, if you give any um, pattern, it gives you what other patterns are compatible with this pattern. So if you say I, it'll give you a list of other patterns that are compatible here. SIJ is our final answer or, or the final matrix that gives you what is the maximum, what is the sum in various situations. So that's the matrix that we are trying to arrive. This is the SIJ matrix, right? Which is what we are trying to fill here. And, and the I is basically this, um, the row is this pattern and the column is this, uh, the various columns that are possible in the checkerboard. Then checkerboard sum IJ is just giving you, given um, any column I and given a pattern that is applied on that column, what is the sum on that column? Right, not the previous columns, but on given that that um, column and the pattern, what is the sum on that column? Right. So this is a pretty straightforward function given the matrix sum ij. Right. You can just sum up where the where the pebbles are, and then you can sum up. So this is straightforward. 
Now here's the algorithm for uh, you have a loop in column that goes from one to n, and then you have uh, for any given column, you also loop over patterns, and patterns are 0 to 7. Now, given a column and a pattern, you try to find the max value that you can gain in that um, column. So there are two things that we saw earlier. If you look at this, there are two things. One is the intrinsic value of this column that you're trying to investigate. So if you're looking at C2, you have to know which pattern you're applying to C2, and that gives you the intrinsic value of that column. And then you have to apply the best previous value. And the best previous value can come from all the compatible columns. And then you compute whatever was the max of those and then add it to this one. So, so first of all, you compute the intrinsic value. An intrinsic value, which we call S1 here, is checkerboard sum of that column and given that pattern that you have chosen here, column and pattern. So that is the first thing. Then we compute a loop over all the previous compatible patterns and compat pattern as as we said earlier is a list of all the patterns that are compatible so you compute prev as the as a compatible pattern and then you have this inner loop that goes over the compatible patterns and then you compute the previous checkerboard sum from the previous column so that column becomes column minus one and the prev is this compatible pattern so then you compute this s2 and then if if s1 plus s2 is greater than your max then you store it and then at the end of this inner loop, once you've exhausted all the previous patterns, then you store for that uh, pattern and column, uh, for that pattern and column, you basically um, store the max. Okay, whatever is the max, you store it. And then you repeat over it. At the end, what you have to do is that you have to pull the max out of the last column because last column will give you all possible patterns and whatever is the max of all the all the values in the last column let's just quickly look at that is that once you reach this last one you'll see which pattern in the last yields you the maximum and that is your answer so um and then what is the order of this algorithm right so we have a loop in n but the inside loops are just 0 to 7 this one will also be at the most 0 to 7 and so this inner loop is just some constant time, but the outer loop is from one to n. So this is an order n algorithm. So um, quickly just running over it, I guess uh, from the problem beginning, there are a couple of things. First, you have to identify what patterns are valid. We observed that number of pebbles will never run out in this problem, and therefore it's a simpler problem. Now keep in mind, if you ran out of pebbles, this problem could get more complicated. And how it could get more complicated because if we could run out of pebbles, we have to see, maybe you have to skip over. And we don't have to go through, uh, you know, maybe we skip some of these columns and put pebbles in some other columns and so on. So we have to see uh, another dimension, which is the number of pebbles. But in this case, number of pebbles is not a problem because we'll never run out of them. And so uh, the way we solved it is we went through each column and each pattern in that column. And, and based on that, we figured out uh, our um, our equation here, and the equation connected our uh, column to the previous column's solutions, and the max solution was then the max of all those. So that's how we solve this problem, and hopefully the solution makes sense to you. If you think that this can be improved upon, do leave me a comment and let me know. Um, but if it does make sense, give me a thumbs up and uh, do subscribe to my channel, which has the solutions for all the problems um, in this chapter. Um, and so um, I would highly recommend you look through those solutions in case you are having trouble with any given problem. Um, but if you really want to um, get a hang of dynamic programming, I would say apply your own learning first, try to solve the problems, then look at the solution and see if, if it lines up with your thinking or it diverges and then you can um, maybe try to align yourself or leave me a comment as maybe, maybe if you find something incorrect, do leave me a comment. So thanks a lot for watching guys. And uh, um, I hope this time here was uh, well worth it. And um, thanks again and see you in another video. Bye-bye.